Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to the part four of the Art Design Workshop modding tutorial series. And in this episode, I will uh, load a custom model into the game, in, into our mod, and try to make the Art Design Beer item use that custom model that we load. And if you're interested only in the programming side of things or just making stuff work in general, um, and not so much in the assets, you can freely skip this part, um, or you can look up some uh, some asset already in the game to that you can change this change this mesh to. Um, but uh, I want to show how to load custom assets in this series as well. So let's do it now. Um, so we need to so to load assets we need to use the official modding kit. Um, but before we open this up, actually, let's go into the modules and into our our module, and let's create two new folders for the assets. So let's create assets, and let's create another one that is asset sources. Um, and this I want to create because um, these are required for uh, our mod to show up in the modding kit otherwise in the resource browser of the modding kit otherwise it will not register this mod as something that has resources another thing that you need to check is once you load uh, once you launch your modding kit uh, in the mods you should have your the mod that you're working on selected here okay now we can just launch this and when you launch this there will be a couple of errors it's saying that uh, missing some DLLs, but uh, we can ignore these. They are not fatal errors. We can still use the resource browser even with these errors. So this is the editor, and if you click here, you can go into the scene editor. Um, right now, I'm not interested in the scene editor, but this is where you can edit maps. Um, instead, I want to press Alt tilde here and go into the resource resource browser so resource.show resource browser um, here you can see two modules uh, native and our module with the assets folder that we created beforehand if we didn't create this folder it would not show up here um, and here if we look at what native has there are tons of different textures and meshes and props you can find all sorts of things here um, and you can also look up their ids for example if you search here for a cup in the native you can find a bunch of cups and look up their mesh id and then use those in your mods as well but for now let's say that we actually want our own asset so but let's let's um Instead of doing the whole modeling ourselves, there is there are a bunch of um, places where you can get free three D models with with good licenses. For example, one website where you can download Blender files, um, Blender model files is this BlendSwap. And if we just search for beer here, we get this uh, medieval beer mugs thing that looks very good for us. Um, so we can just download this and let's take the license CC BY. So assuming that I want to use this, I should also update my README so that I don't forget to attribute. So let's do this. And let's take this URL as well. And we also need to remember to attribute them uh, when we upload the mod to mods nexus so let's just do this so that we don't forget it and um, let's open this up in blender to see how it looks well first of all let me move it from downloads into my project folder let's create new one here which will be asset originals and let me move the blend file here and if we just click this to open it in Blender, 
we will see that it has uh, three marks, but we only want one. So let me quickly uh, give a very quick run through of how to use Blender. Um, there are a ton of great tutorials for Blender already online, but I just want to give you the very basic uh, working knowledge. So these um, tabs on the top, they are, each of these tabs corresponds to one workflow that people want to use Blender for. So the, the basic one is uh, modeling, is the perhaps the most common one. And there are more advanced ones like sculpting and then a bunch of animation stuff and movie. If you're making movies inside Blender, tab for composing and a bunch of advanced stuff. But typically um, we will be using just the modeling workflow and the UV editing workflow. And I will explain the UV editing a bit later. We don't need three cups, so I can just left click this and delete, press L to delete and left click this, to delete and delete. And we are left with just one cup now. Um, and basic uh, commands here, like you can press uh, G to move stuff and S to scale and R to rotate. Um, and each of these um, inside Blender, each these units, so you see this uh, square here, this is one meter by one meter. So you see that this cup is quite large. Um, it's like 40 centimeters or something, so let's make it a bit smaller. Just pressing S and then moving my mouse so that it becomes a bit smaller. Um, I also want to move it so that the handle is in the origin. So the origin is where these lines meet, the zero, zero point where this small dot is right now. So let's press G and and I after pressing G, I press uh, middle mouse click to lock it into one axis. So first I move it on the X axis and then I move it on the Z axis. Now I think the origin is where I want this cup to be held from. So it, you imagine someone's hand grabbing this mug. Um, that is where I would think that their hand will be in the animation. Okay. So. Now. I think we want, we should look at the UV editing. So um, in order to get uh, models into to display cor correctly inside Bannerlord or any other game engine, um, you need to set up materials. And the way that the game engines work is that um, they want to control the materials themselves. So it's not worth our time setting up complicated materials inside Blender because those would be overridden by the game materials anyway. So we just want to set up very basic materials that we can later assign inside the inside the game, inside the resource browser of the modding kit. But first, um, we need to make sure that our object has reasonable um, reasonable uh, UV maps. So you, in, inside this UV editing workflow, we can edit the UV maps. And UV maps are the mapping between the 3D object and the 2D textures. Because the textures are always 2D, we need to have UV mapping. and I can just select everything, so I go into edit mode. There are edit mode and object mode. So here I need to go into edit mode to select all the faces of the object. I can press A, let me deselect everything, and then I can press A to select everything. And then uh, I press F3 to open this um, search. This is like a function search. And I want, um, I want Blender to auto-generate UV maps for me because I don't want to do the UV mapping myself. So I need to type smart UV project. And default settings are fine. And now you can see that it generated. This is the UV mapping you see on the left. Each of the parts of the model um, is mapped into one point or like one section of this texture. And this is what. Um, this is this works well for Panel Lord and for our purposes. So this looks like fine UV map. So um, now 
I think we are ready to try to export this. So we export into FBX. And let me go into my... Um, let's go into the game modules and asset sources. Let me copy this. And export it into here. Just export with default settings, medieval beer marks, FBX. This looks fine. Now we can go into our resource browser. So inside, uh, inside our modding kit, we can come into assets, right click this zone, or we can we can either right click here and import new asset, or press here to scan new asset files. But let's import new assets this way, and go into the asset sources, and then we, it brings up this FBX import settings for import settings of our FBX file and we want to make sure you have um, the unit is set to meters because meters is the blender default so one unit is one meter and here uh, when, once I click import it will say that it's mi missing materials these warnings are fine you can just click ok do not send crash report and always ignore this type of failure because it's not actually um, not actually an error, it just says that it could not find the material. So here we have specified the material is wood 1, and there is no such material in the game. So it gives an error about that. So now you see that um, this is what our object looks like now, but we can um, we can just select one material here, instead of having no material, we can select some, let's search for wood. And this looks fine. Wood section underscore B. Um, and this is what our model looks like in game right now. And that's all really big, pretty good. And if I want to get rid of the error on the future exports, I can come here to material properties and rename this material into whatever the asset that we liked was the wood section underscore b that was the material that we selected and liked okay but i would actually like these um, rims or whatever these rings to be uh, metallic so let's try to do that and let me go back into modeling view and make sure that I'm in edit mode again, so I can press tab to switch between edit mode and object mode, or I can click here and go into edit mode. Um, and I want to select all these, all these rings. Um, and I let me first go into face select mode, where I'm selecting all faces instead of in vertex select mode. I'm selecting just these corners. So I want to set all these faces into this new material. Let me actually create the material. So I want this to be metallic. Let's create placeholder material name. Let's say metal. Um, and then to select these rings, I will hold Alt and click here on the left side and it will select this horizontal. This is called ring select, I believe. If I click on the top, it will try to do it uh, vertically. But let's do horizontal one. And then I press Shift and Alt both, and do another ring select here, and another ring select here. Then I select my metal material and assign everything. Assign will set everything that is selected into this new material. Let's also say this should be this should be metallic, and this should be metallic. Let's select metal and assign. Here the same thing, I want this to be metallic, oh, I want this to be, me oh, I'm having slight trouble here, okay, the ring selection is not working at the moment, so let me do this manually, so I want these to be metallic, um, I think I want this to be metal as well, I think that will look fine. 
So this will now be metallic. And then I want to do ring select here and here. I want to include this, this, but not these ones. So I can press C to enter this, uh, what is this called? Like, um, well, more convenient selection mode, circle selection mode. And then I can press middle mouse click to unselect. And then I could press left click to select. But let's unselect everything here and assign these to our metal material as well. Great. Uh, we want this one as well. Okay, so this should be metallic as well. Now we can save and re export. Oh, actually, one more thing. We saw here that our object was called Cup 2. And that is the name that we have specified here in Blender for this object. So we can call this Artisan um, Beer Mesh. So let's save and let's export. So now it reloaded our FBX. And you can see that the wood material is here, but the metal is set to none because we just put some placeholder name there. And let's search for iron and let's see crude iron. And if I decide this looks fine, I can come back to Blender and actually set the material name to crude iron. Let's say I like this one. So let's rename the material to crude iron. Save. And so this looks fine, but I don't like uh, how these rings are so thick here. So I can just quickly go back into Blender and select everything with this material. These are the parts that are wrong. These ones to be selected. So now if I select just these faces and then scale down, you can see that I can. Um, make this ring these rings a bit smaller actually i want to do it separately separate scaling for each of them so let me do it like that okay there are a lot better blended tutorials out there but it is kind of a whole thing on its own so but now this look fine to me and i can export again Um, and it will reload it. And this looks good to me. So now, if we look again at the resource browser, it will tell us that we have artisan beer mesh assets in our module now, which is what we want. And now we can actually just use it. So we can go into our we can go into our XML editor where we have the item, and we can just type in artisan beer mesh here for our mesh name and that should just work in game so now we are done with the modding kit we can close the modding kit and then launch the game again from visual studio now inside the game we should see that the artisan beer item has our our new mesh attached to it and thumbnail looks good this looks good so I think we can happy, be happy with this. But that is how you load custom mesh into Bannerlord, and how you can get if you're not um, how you can get meshes from online if you want to use someone else's resources, but also make sure to attribute them correctly if you use stuff from other people. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next episode.